Hello again, my name is Vincent uh, Faney. I am the author of Zen and the Art of Resistance Training, a yogic and scientific approach to weight training. Uh, years ago, um, I was telling on the previous two videos, this is the third one, to go a little more extensively into the 600 page manual. I'll be going chapter by chapter, doing trying to do keep it down to 15 minute uh, intervals. Now, I've had many people read this book, and I started writing this book, my knowledge, back in 1996. So that's uh, at the, at the behest of my girlfriend, uh, my fiance, at the uh, encouragement, she saw what I was writing. She knew the information I was gathering and researching for years, and I was at a world-class level of strength. Now, I never put anything out because I never got a world record in the bench at the time. Because at my time, back in the 1980s or so, you had guys who were benching far more than what I was. Hello, hello again. My name is Vincent Faney. I am the author of Zen and the Art of Resistance Training, a yogic and scientific approach to weightlifting. I wrote this book, I started writing this book back in 1996. Actually, it's, uh, it comes to fruition of, um, well, 40 some years of work. I'm going on 56 right now. I've uh, been training with weights and studying weight training since I was 14. And of course, for a couple of years before then, I was studying on my own Hatha Yoga and other forms of meditation and self-hypnosis. I was very intrigued about self-hypnosis as a kid. And Hatha Yoga I liked. You know, along with Hatha Yoga, I used to do a, a, a whole bunch of calisthenics and wind sprints and tree climbings and you know all sorts of tumbling and stuff like that. And uh, while I was very fit and um, uh, in good shape, and I did a lot of visual visualization and imagination because I always wanted to be athletic because as a kid I was the most unathletic kid in the world. I was um, I was so unathletic I was almost legally blind because of my uh, the incubator. I was a premature child and I had an you know put in an incubator. I was born after six and a half months and back then uh, many children their lungs and their eye, you know the eyes were damaged. Uh, some kids were blinded because they put too much oxygen incubator which is harmful to the baby's eyes and lungs which are already uh, generally immature and, and people who are, tend to be preemies will tend to have eye and lung problems later in life or throughout life. So I was very bookish and uh, um, I wasn't weak, I wasn't a weak kid but I was very uncoordinated, no eye, hand and eye coordination maybe because of my blindness. So I was a little spastic and tentative and shy and bookish. And, um, you know, in the team sports, you'd be forced to play with the other kids uh, and or neighborhood sports. I wasn't just the, the last one picked. It was far more humiliating than that. I was the kind of guy that would, they would go, well, <clears throat> not only do we not want Vince, but if you don't force us to take him, we'll give you Bo Jackson and uh, O.J. Simpson as well if you take Vince. That's, that's how bad I was. So I got really into the self, you know, so, um, individual pursuits of reading and, and, and going off and hiking in the woods by myself and looking for bugs and snakes and just re just like I said and just uh, doing keeping fit on my own always fantasizing I could be like Tarzan or wishing that I could be athletic as my father or my brother but uh, so later in life I you know when I reached puberty I started getting a little more confidence and I could get into do in close type of sports where my vision wasn't that much of a requirement so I got into wrestling, you know, basically you're in close, you don't have to look at a ball coming towards you or dribble a basketball or see how far the hoop is. You just grab an opponent, you start wrestling. I really liked that. And uh, like I said, I wasn't weak and I was very determined, so I did pretty well. And then I just decided to try to figure out ways of how to strengthen myself because I reasoned if I was stronger, I would, you know, I'd certainly be able to, and you know, and if I get to keep the same body size and increase my strength in this same gravity of the earth, uh, I would be a little better of a wrestler. Anyways, this book comes from all those years of fruition. Zen of the Art of Resistance Training. It's a nine. Uh, it's a 600-page book, uh, roughly the size of a, a big manual. It's a it's a seven by eleven standard size sheet, not your little novel, with all sorts of pictures and charts. And um, like I said, it started in 1996 because in 1996. I was reaching some pretty good levels of, uh, well, I was reaching some pretty good levels of uh, 
strength training, and I've always, for years, I've got strong long before then, uh, became the, one of the stronger kids in my high school from lifting weights. I could probably do a uh, lift off the floor and press more than anybody in the school, even though I weighed 135. And I was squat almost as much as anybody, certainly would, could do off-the-rack squats as much as any of the big football players, me and John Mullen and Big Delaney. And I had Steve Reiser, who was strongest in the uh, deadlift, but... You know, generally I was pretty strong. So, but uh, I hadn't reached the world level, uh, world class level of strength until, until the you know much later than that. In some ways, so this book, I always want to look like him. I never want to. Look, I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm a strength enthusiast, performance enthusiast. I always want to be skinny, but I want to be a skinny guy who looked like this. I want to weigh 135 pounds if I could. 150 pounds and look like this. Now I'm 5'8", or I was before the car accident, 5'8". I always wish, kind of wish I was 6 foot so I could be more of a decathlete. And I guess I would allow myself to weigh more, but that's what I wanted to look like. Now I never looked like him. Not quite. There's a couple times I came close when I weighed 160 pounds. I had a Zane-like body. People say you have a Zane-like body, but of course I didn't look quite like that. Instead I had to settle for looking like this. Now that's me. My 40s, 40 to 42. Uh, there's so many contests that I was going in, uh, getting trophies, especially in the bench and the squat. But I was uh, not a much of a deadlifter. But I could, I could, not built for benching because I had really long arms. I have a six foot two to six foot two wingspan. If you stretch my arms out side to side this way, fingertip to fingertip, partly, partly has to do with my wide shoulders. But I had a six two wingspan. Um, so, but despite that, I was still a good bencher. Now I had stubby thighs, so I was a, uh, a really good squatter, built for squats. Now, this I'll get back to this later. Right now, I'm just doing an intro, and just to show you that I'm not uh, just BSing about things. You could just if you go back to back issues of Powerlifting USA. You can see where I won um, the, uh, the Northwest Championships in the bench press and uh, came in second or third overall okay I had the second best squat best bench by far the best uh, second best squat for my weight class and uh, uh, third the deadlift in my weight class and overall I had the best I had the best bench pound for pound and I was only one of two people who did twice the body weight I did over twice my body weight so let me just bring this down a bit no no I want to bring it up excuse me okay so basically I don't know if you guys could see. That's me up on the board, and I'll bring it up just a bit more. Okay, 400. And um, at the time I weighed like 180, 181. I wanted to get down to 175. I had enough body fat where I, you know, I wasn't bodybuilding ripped, so I had the fat to spare, but I couldn't quite get down to 175. And obviously, these would be the figures in the 151 to 175 pound weight class. And uh, now both these numbers here, 510 in the squat, back in 1989, and I did better than that after that. Uh, the thing is with this board, you, you have two types of people. They go to the owners and say, I want you to witness me going for a record lift. Then you got other people like me and Steve Shipley and Udo, who we weren't worried about that, so we never went to the owners. But the owners would come out now and then and go see us work out with a heavy weight. Like at this time today, I did 510 for... 25, uh, no, for 15 reps after doing sets starting with 425 for 25, and I got up to 15 reps and I finished off at 600 that day. But they were wandering in, and I was, well, was kind of shy. They saw me doing 510. They said, "Well, why don't you go for a one rep lift?" And I said, like, "I don't want to do that." So they saw me. So they decided to put this up because the, the 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 weight underneath this, the heaviest weight lifted for one rep was by Dave Honstein, former Mr. Oregon, teenage Oregon bodybuilder, 495 squat. So I, I wanted to kind of have like a a private little friendly competition with Dave. I wanted to do 510 because I figured he'd be able to get 515. Then I wanted to get 520. You know, that sort of thing, make it a fun thing. This day, I had done a 430-pound bench at the end of a long workout. And I'll show you what I did for that. I, I really repped out. Um, and so, again, these guys came in and they saw me just doing it. And they just, I didn't go to them and say, "Could uh, hey, watch me do this lift. They, they came out and just saw me doing this. And they put that down as a record, not just by coincidence. Steve Shipley, same thing. Steve Shipley was doing 495 pounds without a shirt. Now, both of us, you know, don't take steroids or use, uh, I didn't use a, he, he lifts with a bench shirt in competition. 
I don't use bench shirts. So a few competitions I've used bench shirts, but I really don't like them. I'm not used to them. I, I really don't get too much more out of them, maybe 20 pounds. Steve gets a lot out of them. He's, he gets 610 pounds. He's a, world, he's a world record holder for his age and weight group. Did 495 in the bench. Uh, for like three, four reps, maybe five reps. Somebody says five reps, and they came out and they were asking him to do a, a one rep max. He, he he's really shy. He's very shy. He's a physical therapist. He trains people, and he's a world champion. So he's a very smart guy. And they saw this, so they put this up because the bench at this level was only 400 and 20, 10 or 20 pounds. So I was shooting for Udo's record. Udo is a former Olympic athlete. He's a former West German shot putter. I think he threw the hammer and stuff like that too, but he was like rated right second on the team. He's been in I mean, world champion level, world games. Uh, you look up his name, he's all in the record books. He's, he's famous in the track and field world. And it's kind of funny because the 605 squat, Udo used to squat like 850, 900 pounds. And uh, he's a big guy, about 6'2", 6'4", and built like a refrigerator, 280 pounds, you know. And unlike me, I never felt safe about squatting outside of a safety squat rack with, you know, all this weight. He just grabbed 605. He, he, was, he used to do Olympic lifting, so he, he would actually go down and just about pick up quarters of his butthole. And he just zipped the weight. This, the bar would just, like, bend. I mean, just, he, his acceleration was incredible out of the hole. He'd just go wham, and the bar would just bend, like wham. And um, he'd just take it off the regular stands, no safety rack. And... Uh, he never did leg presses. I did leg presses, which really greatly invents my squat. And I'll tell you about that more later. It's kind of a funny story. Anyways, this is what I was doing, and so enough of that. And then the reason why I'm showing you this is just to give you, show you some of my creds. Just more of an, um, but right now it's more of an introduction to my book. And I'll get back over this later. Now, I have years of experimentation. Like I said, I've, I've studied about this. I've done research. Then I eventually did more personal research when I wrote the book. At first, I wrote the book just to want to see how much I knew, how much I took in, assimilated, experimented, wrote down after, uh, and I did quite a bit of reading when I was younger. I did some of the reading of like uh, uh, some po powerlifting uh, stuff on strength and so forth. And a lot of their, a lot of the books written initially I ignored because they're specific way of training didn't uh, work for me specifically so I just thought you know you had to take steroids have good genetics to follow some of these routines which is not necessarily true so I, I basically wanted to write this book to see how much I knew on my own and then I decided to do research to see if who, who's people's who's uh, you know experts and so forth if they had opinions that differ from me which I knew they did I wanted to look into this why and then I did a critique on all the uh, programs out there to strengthen weaknesses and, and I actually put a, um, a conclusion of each training program and how I would modify because I felt that all the training programs out there needed modification, at least for me. And this is a gym that I owned when I first came out to Springfield, Oregon, 1982-83. I did uh, lots of experimentation on myself and a lot of different athletes and people. Now, in Ironworks here, Ironworks is a gym that has one of the top Olympic co weightlifting coaches in the world, Tom Hertz. He's, just, he's an amazing guy. He's a silver medalist in the Pan Am Games back in the 70s and alternate in the Olympics and uh, American record holder many times over. One of the most, he's a maverick as a coach. Uh, we also had Mac Mary Decker Slaney work out at the, uh, Ironworks when it was in uh, downtown Eugene right here. This picture was taken in Cresswell, this, but this board was down in Eugene, both places. That's the place where I broke these records. Shipley broke it here in Cresswell and so forth and some of these records there. Now, man, Mary Decker Slaney, um, before I started working at the gym, I understand uh, years ago when the brothers owned the gym, they had Steve Prefontaine. They have uh, two of the uh, daughters of, um, of J uh, John Joseph. He's one of the owners, and two daughters are like national level, world class level swimmers. And he's trained them with weightlifting to improve their swimming. He's a maverick in training also. Uh, we have just like a whole bunch of world from from national from local to up to world class athletes training in various sports like fencing and so forth and so on and I was kind of flattered when many of these guys come up and ask for advice or at least sit to me around and make made sure they would go out of the way to sit with, uh, next to me when I was speaking to someone else. Now, like I said, I used to be real skinny, and right here I was 14 years old. Um, pictures at drugstore someplace. 
Now you can see my neck was a little bit big because I did a lot of uh, bridging from wrestling. But I always try to stay skinny. Right here, I've been lifting for a while, and my body went to muscle up a bit, and I just kept my calories down because I like to stay skinny. And uh, But, you know, the thing is, I, I, I didn't just keep my calories down for weightlifting. I, even when I let my calories go initially, I train in the conventional ways that most people train today, that most people have always trained. And conventional training for me, I always wanted to get as strong as I could, uh, how much weight I could handle, 10 reps, 1 rep, 20 reps. I did the usual training protocols. So initially, I, I didn't gain strength. I didn't get size. I didn't put size on that easily. A few times I tried to put size on easily. I, I really, it came slow for me even when I tried at that time. And when it came, it came slowly. It didn't, it didn't, I didn't mass up like some guys did, whether they were taking steroids or not. My strength was the thing that for a long time went up real quick. And then that hit a wall for a while. Now here I'm shortly after, 16, 17, no, 17 18 years old in the military. I don't recommend a Budweiser cigarette diet, but I was lifting and running and I was trying to keep my weight low. Um, here I was, bulkier than I wanted to be, on a bivouac there. Uh, when, now, I, I would actually do lots of fasting, eating almost no calories per day and run 12 miles a day besides lifting to try to look more like this. Of course, here I'm smoother, see? Even though I'm skinnier, have less muscle mass, I am carrying a higher body fat ratio. When you look at me here, than I am here or here. And I'll get more into that later. It's one of the, the perils of uh, dieting severely and calorie, calorie deprivation and so forth. Now, I'm, I'm putting all this together, my book and everything, so I could sell um, the, the, the DVDs and I'm selling T-shirts and other books that I've written um, to raise money. I have a couple houses, two of my own and a couple other people's houses that I've targeted that would make good houses for women's space and this house I want to turn over to a, a, a disabled veterans uh, with brain damage, specifically brain damage coming from uh, Iraq, Iran, with all the shell shock and the shelling. And because um, they need a place to live, they'll either be homeless or be in a domicile if they don't have families. So basically I have a high equity in this, I don't owe that much. And then I'm going to just be putting this towards it because as a single guy with no family to really worry about, I, I, I can I'll be able to afford to do this, it's, you know, with your help. Anyways, that's this, and that's everything for now, and I'll get back to a little bit more of my credentials of what I could do, because if you're going to listen to somebody, you want to say, well, who are you, and what can you do, okay? So, and that's it, and uh, thanks.